Ever heard of the so-called atomic soldiers, or the test blast so big that it left behind 7,000 square miles of fallout? Keep watching for more stories of the devastating effects of nuclear weapons testing. Three years after research into nuclear weapons began, the first ever nuke was set off in the New Mexico desert. It was named Gadget. Project leaders chose the Hornado del Muerto desert because it was flat, had little wind, and was incredibly isolated. The closest people to the bomb were a mere 10,000 yards away when Gadget was dropped, setting off an explosion slightly larger than the one that destroyed Hiroshima. Today, background radiation at the site is still about 10 times higher than normal, although it's safe enough to have been opened as a National Historic Landmark District. The Trinity Test's legacy isn't over, however. In 2020, the National Cancer Institute released the results of a study that asked whether or not the test impacted the cancer rates in the area. While the report suggested it was impossible to know with certainty, they do know a few other things. Those who live downwind of the test say their communities have suffered high instances of cancer and birth defects, while there was a rise in infant mortality immediately following the test. At the time, the government was well aware that nuclear fallouts could be a major problem for those still living in the area. Between 1945 and 1962, the U.S. conducted a staggering number of nuclear tests on domestic soil, 230 above-ground tests to be precise, and around 235,000 military personnel were involved in those tests, while 20,000 British soldiers also witnessed the atomic blasts up close. British soldier Douglas Hearn later told Motherboard that it had been a defining point in his life. He explained, when the flash hit you, you could see the x-rays of your hands through your closed eyes. Then the heat hit you, and that was as if someone my size had caught fire and walked through me. It was an experience that was unearthing. It was so strange. David Hemsley was just 18 years old when he was on site for a test, remembering, If I was looking at you now, I would see all of your bones. You would see all the blood vessels. Did it have a lasting impact? Not according to the official research published in the International Journal of Radiation Biology. While researchers say that the radiation had no statistically significant occurrence of problems such as cancer and sterility, those who were there say otherwise. These men say that they were given no choice in attending the tests and that they later suffered radiation burns and lifelong health problems, ranging from hair loss to cancer. Many were denied compensation for these issues. However bad the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki might seem, the fact is that they were actually so much worse. The crew of the Enola Gay had no idea what they were carrying on that fateful day. They knew it was something big, but words like atomic and nuclear were never mentioned to the crew. It was only when they were on their way home, looking back on what they had done, that co-pilot Robert A. Lewis wrote, I honestly have the feeling of groping for words to explain this, or I might say, my God, what have we done? A bomb was finally released exactly at the designated hour, and the explosion occurred as planned. Second Lieutenant Russell Gackenbach was the last surviving member of the crew of the Enola Gay. In 2018, he told NPR, After 73 years, I do not regret what we did that day. All wars hell. But here's another side of the story, that of people like Yoshitaka Kawamoto. He was 13 years old when the bomb hit, around half a mile from where he was going to school. In the wreckage, he found his friend Ota. He remembered, I could see that his back was broken. Ota was looking at me with his left eye. His right eyeball was hanging from his face. He took a student handbook from his pocket. I asked, do you want me to give this to your mother? Ota nodded. A moment later, he died. According to the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, the U.S. has held 1,032 nuclear tests between 1945 and 1992. More shockingly still is that some have gone terribly wrong. On March 1, 1954, an operation codenamed Castle Bravo launched a hydrogen bomb into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Only, it wasn't exactly a barren wasteland, and it wasn't exactly the explosion they'd been expecting. When the scientists involved emerged from their bunker to look upon the mushroom cloud, their Geiger counters started crackling a warning. Despite being 20 miles away from ground zero, they were experiencing a dangerous amount of fallout. The Castle Bravo explosion was three times larger than they had expected, and it was a full thousand times more powerful than the bomb that had destroyed most of Hiroshima. The blast vaporized 10 million tons of coral, which fell over a huge swath of ocean. Fishermen on a boat 70 miles away suffered severe radiation burns, and the children of nearby Rongelap Island played in what they thought was snow. It wasn't. It was nuclear ash. The detonation of the bomb of Castle Bravo made an unbelievable mess, one that began with the complete destruction of three nearby islands. Radioactive fallout from the test covered an incredible 7,000 square miles. Among the worst hit area was Rongelap Atoll, which was quite literally covered with radioactive debris. 
This debris was an average of an inch thick and spread all over the atoll and surrounding coral reefs. In 2018, divers headed out to Rongelap to see just what progress the coral reefs had made. They found that hot ocean currents in 2014 had bleached and killed much of the marine life that was there. There's good news and bad news here, though. The good news is that researchers found that the marine ecosystem is incredibly resilient in the face of nuclear testing. The bad news is that some serious damage was still being done, largely thanks to the onset of global warming. That's not to say Castle Bravo hasn't had much of an impact on the environment, because it has, on a global scale. The explosion generated a massive amount of the radioactive carbon isotope known as carbon-14. In fact, hydrogen bombs in general have created so much carbon-14 that researchers have found it in every living thing they've tested. The residents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki aren't the only civilians to have had their homes destroyed by atomic weapons. In 1945, then-President Harry S. Truman gave the go-ahead for more weapons testing, and a new testing ground was chosen, the Bikini Atoll. There was one problem, though, and that was the fact that people were still living there. In 1946, the 167 people living on Bikini Atoll agreed to leave. They were moved to another island called Rongerik, but there was so little food there that they quickly found themselves facing starvation. They were shuffled around again and again, living in tents on airstrips and on island after island. As Alison Keelan, a Bikini exile himself, says, They probably thought it was a couple weeks. They didn't really know how long. Nuclear testing, meanwhile, destroyed their little piece of paradise, and by the time testing ended in 1958, it was totally uninhabitable. They resettled there in the early 1970s, but when people started getting sick and dying, it became clear that the cleanup efforts hadn't actually worked. Even the food they grew was deadly. After the detonation of the bombs over Japan, the U.S. military decided it wanted to know more about atomic weapons. And when they began conducting tests in the Pacific Ocean, they found scores of unwilling test subjects. Operation Crossroads was established to find out just what would happen to naval warships if they were hit by nuclear weapons. These tests were publicly announced, the press was invited, and the warships themselves were filled with animals. Hundreds of animals, including goats, pigs, rats, mice, and guinea pigs were either caged or restrained in metal frames on board the ships. About 10% died immediately during the blast. More died after days or weeks of suffering, and those that survived were later killed and examined. There was a single survivor, pig number 311, who escaped the test ship and was later recaptured swimming in a nearby lagoon. Little number 311 was rehomed at the Smithsonian's National Zoological Park, and the incident sparked mass protests over the use of animals in nuclear testing. It was Harry Truman who designated a 640-square-mile patch of the Nevada desert to become the Nevada Proving Grounds. This was the only above-ground nuclear test site that was active in the continental U.S. during peacetime. Understandably, the residents of Las Vegas were a little worried because they were only around 65 miles away. But that's when something weird happened. Las Vegas suddenly embraced its proximity to the testing sites, rebranded itself as the Atomic City, and started throwing viewing parties. The first test in the area was performed on January 27, 1951, and the local Chamber of Commerce immediately added mushroom cloud to their list of things to see in Vegas. And people absolutely came. Some got reservations at the Desert Inn Sky Room for a panoramic view of the tests, while others packed lunches and headed into the desert to get even more up close and personal. The booming tourist trade brought a huge amount of cash into the area, and Vegas became the hottest spot to be. Eventually, however, area farmers began complaining that their livestock were suffering from radioactive fallout. Testing there was banned in 1963. In 2017, the University of Arizona published a paper that examined just how the U.S.'s nuclear testing impacted the health of its citizens. The findings were dire. According to the report, the cumulative death toll attributable to nuclear testing is 7 to 14 times larger than previous estimates. The paper took into account problems such as radiation entering the food supply through dairy products, which the National Cancer Institute had named as the primary vector of radiation in the food chain. It also looked at radiation that was spread by the wind or absorbed into wheat and grains. Their estimates suggest that between 1951 and 1973 alone, the fallout and radiation from nuclear weapons testing contributed to somewhere between 340,000 and 460,000 deaths. The study also looked at the so-called social costs of these deaths, which can be defined as the amount of money that they cost both private individuals and society as a whole. Researchers suggest that these deaths cost the U.S. somewhere between $473 billion and $6.1 trillion. The effects of nuclear testing aren't just long-lasting, they're global. And in 2020, New York Times columnist Carl Zimmer set out to prove that fact. 
To do it, he headed to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, 7,300 miles away from the nuclear testing grounds in Bikini Atoll. There, he visited the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, where they were studying the cross-section of a tree that had been planted in 1870. The cross-section was sent off for analysis, and when researchers sampled the levels of radiocarbon in the rings of the tree, they found a map of the nuclear timeline. Carbon remained level until the ring that corresponded with 1954, and as more and more testing was done, the tree gained more and more carbon, until 1963's Partial Test Ban Treaty. Then it started to decline, albeit at a much slower rate than it accumulated. The last ring in the tree still contained levels of radiocarbon that were 6% higher than pretest levels, and it wasn't just that one either. From Cape Cod to the forest of New Zealand to the coral reefs of the Galapagos Islands, the history of mankind's nuclear testing is written loud and clear. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about world history are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.